Welcome back to Xbox Corner, my name is Alex and today Luke's gone and got himself a hangover so I'll be covering and running you through the games closing out September's Game Pass run and what's going to be kicking us off in October. This one it was supposed to be a quick video, free titles only, and then Xbox they went and broke the internet and out of nowhere they dropped four massive surprise releases on us. So hit subscribe for weekly Xbox reviews, deals and Game Pass breakdowns and let's get into this. So first a title that came out of nowhere a few days back but Dandy Ace. This one it wasn't on any of the release schedules but a quick tweet announced the launch and here it is. I've played the Switch build of this particular title but it's essentially a magician based spin on Hades, you know that isometric style roguelike formula. The story with this one it misses sadly with little more than an opening cutscene explaining there's a competing magician he hates you and traps you in what is a mirror world now you need to escape. That's a shame because this one one, it's for sure an interesting world that kind of feels a little bit underdeveloped. The gameplay though, expect to die, try again and repeat. You'll get a random selection of attacks that are attached to what are playing cards found around this world, and later in the game you can even start to combine these cards that will mean maybe you'll have an attack that also attaches to an element, so think electricity. I loved that little extra dose of strategy. Not an easy game and nor should you expect it to be going in, but I even liked the visual style they went for and that kind of over the top use of colour. We'll say on those visuals though, opinions this far they've definitely been mixed. I'd give it a shot though, you can beat a first run in 7 to 10 hours, just don't expect here Hades levels of excellence. Alright, so out of nowhere then Game Pass dropped on us three games that were coming today live immediately and we're starting with Scarlet Nexus. I picked this up on day of release, something I'm somewhat regretting with it hitting the service so quickly, but this is why we love Game Pass. It's by far the best value you can get in gaming. An action RPG though, you'll find yourself in a futuristic world that's been attacked by alien mutants known as the Others. They are out for human brains, you know, that classic of a storyline. The invasion though occurred after humans discovered what were psionic powers and now a special forces team has been put together to go and save the day. With two playable characters then, there's essentially two stories to follow that will give you a deeper understanding to this world, its lore, and there's a huge cast to meet along the way. The powers are great fun though, the visuals are beautiful, especially when you throw in that series XS upgrade, and yeah, while I do think the RPG side of things, they're relatively light, it's actually a good thing in this case because it just suits the storyline, it continues to push you forward into what are massive combat encounters. A must download in my opinion this one and a fantastic win for Game Pass to add this to the service. Our next surprise drop then is a personal favourite of mine, that is AI The Somnium Files. This for me was one of my favourite games of 2019. It's got a whole lot of dialogue and even leans into visual novel at times, which isn't for me typically. But this also puts a whole lot of focus on the investigation and the mystery. I like to think here Phoenix Wright if it went for a seriously adult storyline. A sequel was just recently announced though, which I cannot wait for. The writing here is phenomenal, and visually then I just love the overall style they went for. Story-wise then, you are a detective on the hunt for a murderer who killed a woman and even gouged out one of her eyes. It's pretty brutal stuff to say the least this one, but it's packing over 30 hours of gameplay, there's multiple endings and there's a fair few special abilities that really make that gameplay feel unique. If you are unsure then check out some reviews, I promise you will struggle to find a bad word against it. The final surprise drop then out of nowhere Game Pass announced Marvel's Avengers would release with little to no notice and following what was a rocky launch and lukewarm reception, this may just be the save this game needs. Not only are we getting the base game though but all expansions released this far including the Black Panther War for Wakanda pack. The only thing we are missing are a few cosmetics that can be purchased separately. It's struggled since launch though with some seriously low play numbers so maybe now the audience will finally give it a shot. The low reviews though, I've got to be fair, they are justified, it's all very generic, but I also believe it's not as bad as maybe it's been made out to be if you kind of temper your expectations going in. It's an action RPG, it's just very average across the board though, you'll play in third person, either solo or in what is online co-op and yeah, basically grab your favourite heroes, get with some friends from what is a decent selection and go cause some destruction. Wrap up the campaign then, there's still more to do with side quests and so on. That's where the game struggles for me though, it just doesn't have much of a hook after you wrap that story up. It also definitely would have benefited from maybe a likeness or two with some of these heroes because a few of the models, they definitely feel a little bit off. 
RPG fans then, we've got one for you here, that is Astria Ascending, the team behind it. Some serious pedigree with veterans of Final Fantasy, Near Automata and Bravely Default, just to name a few. It's aiming though to offer up a more serious and mature tone with its themes and plot than the genre may typically be known for. It follows a band of eight would-be heroes who have been marked as demigods. Now that might sound like a good thing as it grants these eight special powers, but there's also a negative too. They only now have three years to live because of this gift. The questions though Astria Ascending is asking though is how does this death sentence of sorts impact each of the party and their obligations to fulfill their duties? It's packing though exploration, 20 dungeons and turn-based combat with what appears to be some serious depth. We are talking here 20 different character classes to add across your party, each with a unique set of skills and abilities so you can build that best team possible. The combat then will ask you to balance attacks and spells that do either physical, elemental or neutral damage. And of course the game's enemies, they each have a weakness that you need to uncover associated to these attack types. This one then is promising over 50 hours of gameplay and that's before we even begin to look at the included minigames and side quests. So yeah, I'm excited for this one myself and I cannot wait to check it out. Unsighted up next then and it's an isometric metroidvania where you'll be put into the role of a mechanical humanoid called Alma. You've awakened on a world destroyed by humans, you've discovered a resource known as Anima is all but gone. This is important because it's what powers you so yeah it's essentially a fight for survival which is always a good one. With resources low though, the world's robot population, including your friends, they are transforming into what are mindless killing machines. So yeah, get out there now and figure out that solution. Think here though, exploration, puzzle platforming and combat and you get the idea. There's even a few mechanics that are pulled straight from the Souls world like a stamina system and a focus on perfectly timed dodges and parries. A few areas though that are really standing out to me on this one is a dual world system meaning you can combine both melee and ranged weapons. There's a chip system to buff different stats and then the most interesting to me it has to be the souls like hollowing mechanic or becoming unsighted as it's known in this game. Basically each of the NPCs you meet they have their own in game timer counting down to their demise including yourself. Will you focus on your own timer or help others leading to some real moral decisions? Looks like good stuff to me though this one but I'm not expecting it to be easy. So kicking us off in October then, and the final game of this week's lineup, it's Phoenix Point. This one is for the XCOM fans out there. It comes from the same creative lead that is Julian Gollop. It's been out for a while now over on Windows, Mac and good old Stadia, but now it's making its console debut, and I've been waiting a long time to get my hands on this one. It's the usual alternative Earth, and alien virus has caused mass destruction, you know, mutated creatures, all sorts are on the loose. So go save humanity as a secret organization known as the Phoenix Project, and basically yes please. For me these games are all about experimenting with classes, the six here contained, figuring out my equipment and then attaching abilities. It is always excellent stuff. I'm not really expecting it though to break any new barriers for the genre but the pedigree of the team behind it is high and you'll be commanding that team, managing resources, conducting base and technology research and it even has a diplomacy system because there's actually other factions out there battling for what little power remains. Will you work against them or will you work with them? Alongside the combat then you can of course expect a whole lot of exploration and side quests to really build up that playtime. As always with a game like this I'm curious to see now how it all works on console with controller in hand. It's been a long time coming though and I'm really excited to check it out. And that's another week down on what was supposed to be a quiet week, it quickly escalated with four extra games and Xbox they are not messing about. This, it's one of the best weeks I've seen in a while, and then we even have the Battlefield open beta coming next week, which we will have a separate video on shortly. What will you be downloading this week? Anything catching your eye? Let us know in the comments down below, and with that, hit subscribe. Each week here you can expect deals, game pass breakdowns, reviews, all that good stuff, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.